There's been nearly $200,000 worth of liquidations occurring across some of the top DeFi applications within the Cardano ecosystem through no fault of the actual users on the platform. As a part of today's video, I wanna highlight one particular area where the Cardano ecosystem needs to do better. And I wanna break down some recent issues that have occurred on chain. What's up, Beta Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. Today, I wanna to talk about an interesting topic that continues to occur, and it's dealing with one specific area of the ecosystem, which is basically DeFi and oracles. So I wanna go ahead and lay down the foundation. We've had a minor issue. Well, actually, it's probably a major issue, right? But if it continues to happen, it's probably gonna be a really solid deterrent to adoption of DeFi within Cardano, which I personally think is one of the fastest growing portions of the ecosystem. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right on in here. And I wanna start off by just quickly highlighting all of the amazing DeFi related protocols that we've got here in the ecosystem. First, and probably the biggest and most used is Indigo. We've got Liquid or Liquid Finance or LQ. We've also got LenFi, Maze, Matera, all dealing with index protocols or indexed based assets. We've also got Option Flow providing the ability to trade options on Cardano. We've got Goki, Flag Finance, Butane, also another synthetics protocol. So the ecosystem really growing, really thriving in terms of DeFi. However, we've had two major issues which I think really need to be addressed moving forward. Now, you guys know here I'm a huge supporter of Cardano. This is by no means a dig at the projects, but it's obviously just the facts, right? There's nothing specific to the projects here that I'm going to be putting out that they haven't mentioned themselves. And I want to be transparent about that. So about two to three months ago, right, late January, early February, we had mass liquidations taking place on LQ following a Oracle update that basically messed up a lot of the pricing data for JED and IUSD. So it states here, Dear Liquid Community, at approximately 2300 or 11 o'clock at night, the prices for JED and IUSD spiked due to a faulty API stemming from our CoinGecko price feed, receiving incorrect data from the Wing Riders Dex API. Now, to sort of remove a lot of the technical pieces here, dealing with DeFi, right, where you're lending and borrowing assets, there's liquidations that have to happen depending on the value of your collateral. Now, the team is able to get that value by taking a look at different centralized exchanges or potentially sometimes even decentralized exchanges in order to figure out what the actual value for a particular token is. In this particular example, the pricing data for JET and IUSD should always come back very close to being worth a single dollar. In this particular instance, the value of JET and IUSD came back at something less than a penny, which as you could imagine, would have basically liquidated anybody who would have been in any sort of position using JET or IUSD as their underlying collateral. So that's really sort of the problem, um, sort of broken down pretty quickly, pretty simply. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense here. Now, thankfully, right, there was 140,000 eight is worth, or I think it was $140,000 worth of liquidations that occurred. But the people that were liquidated were actually nice enough to work with the protocols to reestablish their close positions. So it reads here, the largest defaulting position was worth $120,000, has been re-collateralized through mutual cooperation with the user who created it. Now, yesterday, or actually two days ago, we saw a very similar issue here with the butane protocol moving liquidity in that impacting the LenFi protocol. Again, I'm not taking a dig at LQ or LenFi. It's just that these are two of the protocols where we've seen this issue rear its head up again. So it states here Cardano cannot be taken seriously as a DeFi chain if these liquidation events continue to occur. I definitely agree. And right now, Cardano is a much more professional, a much more forward thinking chain especially with regards to DeFi. We've got a lot of synthetics here, a lot of lending and borrowing. And if we want to onboard people to use these brand new tools, these brand new me mechanisms, we have to make sure that they're reliable. And if there's any sort of liquidation events that occur, right, based off of um, oracles or just things that aren't necessarily tied to the user in the actual collateral value that they've put down, that could be extremely off-putting 
right? Imagine you have a position open and that gets liquidated because of something outside of your control. That's going to make you less likely to go ahead and use that protocol in the future. So I completely agree here with the Optum GMI account. Now there is a piece here that I don't agree on, and I'm gonna to quickly touch on that here as well, where it states Cardano doesn't have any working Oracle networks. That's the piece where I have to disagree. We've got Charlie three, right? Now they are pay to play, but they are functioning here on the main net. We've also got the Orcfax network, which right now is also going through their incentivized test net. They also do have an ADA price feed with Cardano native token feeds on the way. So I cannot agree here that Cardano has no working oracles. We most definitely do. It's just that protocols that want to use their data would basically have to pay as opposed to going with a free route or with their own custom Oracle solution. So that's sort of the risk there when you're taking um, the build your own Oracle approach. Now at the very bottom, it states here, last night there was a mass liquidation event due to miscommunications between the butane and the LenFi team. So very unfortunate. I want to quickly highlight exactly what happened, where it states here that right around midnight, the butane team mentioned that they're going to be moving liquidity to more DEXs. However, they only moved liquidity over to the Sunday swap V3 DEX. Now, I don't have the facts here. I don't have transaction history. I'm literally just taking what I see here from Nio Rock's tweet. So do take that with a grain of salt. Again, not bashing the butane team. I don't know exactly what was said by who. All I know is that mass liquidations took effect. Now, following that, there were huge butane liquidations on LenFi because the LenFi team was looking at MinSwap for their Oracle pricing data, and they were not necessarily including SundaySwap v3, which just got released on the main net. So this basically comes down to a single point of failure, which obviously is huge in this space. You never want to rely on a single point or on one single platform for your pricing feed. You want to make sure to have fail safes or fallbacks, but then you also want to take an aggregation. So maybe you've got four or five different platforms reporting and you do a triangulation and grab, you know, the average of all of the data points or all the different platforms that are reporting price data, excluding any outliers which may be bad data, right? So in this particular instance, we do have butane being listed on other DEXs and on other centralized exchanges. I know that they've been listed on Maxi, which is a centralized exchange. They've also been listed on, I think, um, Wing Riders. Um, obviously, they were listed on MinSwap. Now they're being listed on SundaySwap. It would make more sense to take an aggregation of all of those prices for the butane token as opposed to looking at just one particular platform for this particular reason alone. So you've now got people who've been liquidated if they were using butane as collateral, right, on the LenFi protocol through no means of their own. Their position should technically still be open, but they've been liquidated because of this Oracle issue. So some of the things that this basically poses, right, is a hindrance in adoption of DeFi in the Cardano ecosystem. It also poses centralization risk because you're only looking at a centralized platform or a single platform, I should say. It's not always that they're looking at centralized or um, centralized exchange APIs. You could still be looking at a decentralized exchange, but in terms of centralization, you're only looking at one platform. So you're not getting the whole picture, especially if the one platform you're looking at does have an incorrect value. Number two is that it poses data manipulation risks, right? So let's say that there is an insider with bad motives or bad intent. They could manipulate the pricing data, right, from MinSwap, if that's the only place you're looking at, and that would basically impact everybody else on the LenFi or the um, AADA protocol. Now, imagine if they were to manipulate other token prices as well, we could see massive liquidations taking place there. Now, we've also got a lack of transparency, but then also trust issues. And this is where I think we really have to fix the problem is if we want people to come into this space, they need to trust the protocols and the fact that they're actually going to be doing things the right way. So that said, let's talk about some of the potential solutions. I want to kick things off here by highlighting Charlie 3 or C3. I've had Damon here on the channel multiple times. Now, one thing to keep in mind here with C3 is that they do offer pricing data. It is pay to play, right? So you can decide how often you want your data to be um, refreshed, how many nodes are reporting the data, and then the deviations in terms of if there's actual fluctuations in the value of the asset where you need quick and instant updates without waiting on the normal update schedule. Now, parts of their solutions 
are closed source. So do keep that in mind with Charlie 3. But right now they've integrated price fees on the mainnet for ADA, Shen, um, IBTC, IETH, um, their C3 token, NMaker, IUSD, quite a bit here in terms of support for Cardano integrations. Next in the second option here is Orcfax. So this team has officially gone live on the mainnet. Right now they do have their um, Explorer, which is publishing facts. As you can see there, over 7,600 facts already published, 16 alone today. However, right now they've got support for just ADA on the mainnet. They are actively working to provide pricing data for Cardano native tokens or Cardano native assets, which would include something like Butane there as well, right? So both of these platforms are pay to play again when it comes to the heartbeats or the frequency, the deviations and then the amount of nodes actually reporting the data. The last thing I want to close off with is the fact that we have heard from Frederick Agard, the head of the Cardano Foundation, and he mentioned not too long ago at the funding round number 12 for Project Catalyst event, which took place in Barcelona, that they're going to be working to onboard a major Oracle solution into the Cardano ecosystem. Now we've had Charles Hoskinson highlight the fact that he was trying to get Chainlink into the ecosystem a while back. This was, I think, in 2021 or 2020. And we obviously haven't seen that, but it looks like this could become a huge topic, right, moving forward. It's an important one nonetheless, but I wanted to highlight the problem, the solution, and what we need to expect from all the protocols moving forward. Again, not a shot at Montas and the entire LenFi team. They've been working extremely hard. Not a shot at DC and the entire LQ team, right? They've, they've also been working hard. Both of them, you know, leading DeFi protocols here with V2s already live, right? With millions in terms of ADA locked on their protocol. So obviously their platforms are working well, but this is something that we definitely need to tie up in order to make sure that it doesn't continue to plague the ecosystem, therefore deterring more people from onboarding into Cardano DeFi. That'll do it here for today's video. I hope you guys found this to be helpful. If you learn anything along the way, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more content like this, breaking down everything in Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me regarding this particular topic or anything else going on in Cardano, then make sure to leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.